Good morning and welcome to Trinity Alliance Church this morning. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us. For those of you joining us on live stream, we welcome you. And um, for those of us here, I want to draw your attention to our website, tachurch.com. That's where all the happenings of the church are kept in order. So it's pretty easy to follow. You can use that to mark your own calendar and make your plans. And we want to encourage you to get involved in lots of other fall activities that are going to happen. And I'm going to call on Miss Christy to kind of clarify some of that. Good morning, guys. Um, this coming Wednesday, we kick off our Roots Ministry. It's um, our family ministry. And we come together at 5, 5.30. Um, for some fellowship, bring a picnic dinner with you, and um, we just get to check in on each other, see how the week is going. Um, at 6.15, we clean up and we start our activities for the night. At 6.45, our teens run some activities for our little guys while uh, parents get to come up here and have some parenting time together. Um, it's been a blessing for my family, um, and we're really looking forward to getting started with that. Um, this year, we are kind of bringing it all together with our kids' church. We've changed our curriculum for this year, and um, we're going to make it more cohesive. So the things we talk about on Sunday will also be talked about on Wednesday. Um, even if you don't have littles, we would love for you guys to come out. There's a place for everybody. I can always find something for you to do. Um, I know in my life, a lot of the people who blessed me the most in my Christian walk were not my biological family. So um, I encourage you grandparents, um, come love on some kids. If um, you feel like you're out of that season, um, I invite you back into that season. So um, Wednesday, 5.30, bring your dinner and come be blessed. Good morning. Uh, just want to throw out there that there is a new Bible study starting, not a new Bible study, this is our second one. It's a, it's a couple's small group, all right? There's two spots left. I just want to say this isn't for newlyweds. This is our last group. I think everybody was married 25 years or up, or it could be for newlyweds. Something very interesting, the world is saying that marriage is supposed to be a certain way. And as Christians, what does God say about it? And that's really, really super important. So we are starting the 24th. We're starting the 24th. And there's a few things that this is a awesome time. There's a few couple of the Tozers are here, the Taylors. It's an amazing time of fellowship, number one. Sherry cooks a meal. It's so good. It's so, so good. Um, there's a game night, too, at the end of this. It's six weeks long. And uh, the women got a little nasty on game night. You did. You did. Especially Patty Taylor. All right. And I did some research. And honestly, you might be hanging out with the coolest person in the church. Cool, coolest couple. I'm sorry. Coolest, cu coolest couple in the church. So there's two spots left. I'm sorry. I messed that one up. There's two spots left. Um, the sign-up is in the back. So... Friday night. Thank you. Please stand. Let's refocus here. <laughs> As you stand and prepare your hearts for worship, there's a, just a couple of things that I'd like to ask you to join us in. Lay down the burdens of your heart. Whatever you came in with that distracts you, whatever your weak did to you. Some of us come in here and we're beat up and we're weary. Some are recovering physically. Some are stressed about the coming week. Whatever it is that is keeping you from looking and fixing your eyes solely on the Lord, lay it down. Let this be a time of reflection and preparation.
worship in this place. I encourage you to stand. But if the Spirit moves you to kneel, the Spirit moves you to sit. If you're more comfortable sitting, this is not a judgment zone. This is a zone for freedom. If you're worshiping Him, that's all that matters. That's what we want. We want more of Him as He reflects more of Himself to us. It humbles us, doesn't it? Contemplate the gift and worship Him because He's so worthy of our praise. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord as we enter the temple.
live in your presence. We just did not forget that you are always there. Bring us that fullness of joy that comes from truly knowing who you are, God. Reveal your heart to us today.
here at Trinity Alliance Church, our goal, our mission is to have a passion for God, to grow in a passion for Him and compassion for others. And to do that, we must be equipped. We have to be equipped, and it's our responsibility, not not mine and not the elders and not the church's responsibility. It's our own individual responsibility to truly seek growing, to be able to go and get engaged in, in the church and in what God is doing and be equipped for the good works that God is sending us to do. Sarah's going to come up again. Uh, this is a very equipping time in Sarah's life. God has been doing uh, some incredible work. She's going to share with us uh, this next phase of what God is going to be doing. For your support. Um, for those of you who don't know, yes, I just finished a five-month training with um, Youth with a Mission in Philadelphia, um, where I you know, spent the first three months just really diving into um, the Word and just being discipled strongly um, by a community and going out evangelizing for the first time across um, Philadelphia and some of the hardest um, parts of, of that city and just really being called to a higher standard in my walk with the Lord and really just seeing Him in a new way and seeing all that He has for me and, and wanting more. And um, during that time, I really learned to depend on the Lord, um, you know, for my growth, that there's nothing really I can do to receive more of the Lord except submit to him. And then as I go out and serve and minister to others and tell people about him, it's again like me getting out of the way of that. And that was a, really a time where the Lord did just that, where he humbled me and was like, if you're going to do this, it has to be me. You really can't do it by yourself anyway. And so it was really, really awesome time. And I told you guys a little bit about that, I think, last time I was up here. So more so, I wanted to share with you about outreach before I get into what God has next for me, just because God did so much, and I wanted to share it with you because, man, he's amazing. So, um, yeah, so how we did it was those two weeks of outreach. We went to Mexico. Um, Mexico was cool because it was very Catholic um, area, so a lot of people knew about the Lord. Um, they kind of knew who Jesus was, but n most, like almost everyone we came into it didn't really have a relationship with him. And so just being able to urge with people, you know, that's the whole point of why Jesus died. He wanted us to, you know, go to heaven and obviously, like, spend eternity with him. That's very important. But also, it's not just like, okay, one day type of thing. And, and you know, um, just focusing on the day in and day out aspect of knowing the Lord, not just following, you know, these rules of religion that they have um, in Catholicism, but actually loving the Lord, knowing him, spending time with him. You know, it's cool, these, these um, one group of college girls that we came in contact with, um, they were like, what do you mean? Like, they were, they were like, their minds were blown by that when we were talking to them about it. Um, and they were like, there's such a joy in you that we haven't seen ever in, in um, being raised in the Catholic faith. Um, and so we were able to just disciple a bunch of people, tell them about the Lord. Um, then moving for we, forward, we had um, a like, two-week training where like 100 people came into our building, youth mostly and some leaders, and we raised them up and taught them how to evangelize. It was kind of like a, a youth um, retreat, but it was like 10 days of being poured into, and then after that we did discipleship, and I mean, we did evangelism. So it was like six days, and we went all around our area and told people about the Lord, and that was really cool. And then after that, we went to New York, and we told kids about the Lord, and we did a bunch of VBSs and service. And through all of that outreach, this is crazy, over 1,400 people came to Christ. Like, how crazy is that? 1,400. Like, I, we saw that. Like, and for me personally, like, previously never have lead, leading anyone to the Lord. Like, over, I think, around 50 people I led. Like, what? That's crazy, right? Um, so anyway, that was, like, mind-blowing, and it was just so cool to see. You know, for me, I think I used to think, oh, you have to be this special person. You have to have all of the boxes checked to be able to, you know, serve or lead or tell others about him. But it's just being obedient and going. And, you know, the Lord just blesses our obedience. And so, yeah, it's been an awesome time. I just wanted to thank you guys so much um, just for being able, being just a support in that time for me. I just could see the fruit so much of you guys um, in your financial support and also just in your prayers, just in my daily life, being able to make that happen and just ushering me forward. So powerful. Um, so yes, what's next for me is Bible school. It's going to be with YWAM as well. It's three months, not five. And um, basically how that works is it's going to be in Boston. And um, we're going to go through the Bible, like the whole thing, in three months. And we're going to have um, 
We're gonna have teachers come in from all over the world and who like specialize in like books and we're gonna have them like kind of invest into us and teach us and dive into like all the different aspects of that book um, and really study it. Um, and yeah, I just, I just, I'm excited to not only grow in like the knowledge of scripture because I think that's very important, but also just to learn God's nature and character, you know, through all of the books of the Bible. And, you know, um, obviously it's easy for us to see some of that in the New Testament, but I'm, I'm personally excited to go through the old and just, you know, see all of God's story and all that he has done for us. Um, and as someone who feels called to ministry and missions, I just know that this school is going to just greatly impact this, the fruitfulness of all that I do in the future and really going to be a strong um, foundation, you know, for, for what God has next. Um, so you guys can be praying for me in that. I know that you are a praying church. So, yes, just be praying for, you know, me to continue to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and that his will would be done first in my heart and then in everything that he does in my actions. So be praying. Um, Jess, Jeff, I almost called you Jess. Um, he has the, the details on how to, how to give. It's uh, 4000 everything included for the three months. So here you go. Thank you, you have so a, much. You have a mic, so. yeah. <laughs> Amen. The other part of what we say is we have to invest and invite. And uh, you have invested well in Sarah, and not just uh, over the past couple months, but in her entire life here at Trinity. You have invested in her. And, uh, and she, what God has been doing is an incredible thing. Um, we do want her to be able to go to this school, uh, so we are asking if you feel led to give, uh, to, uh, to either reach out to Sarah and, and you, can, you can give uh, that direction, but we would prefer it to come through uh, the church. We've done that before for her, and uh, you can give to the church as she's heading out to this equip uh, time where she will have a chance to really grow uh, in this and be equipped for the next stage of what God is going to be doing. So we're all excited and we're in there with you. So awesome. All right, do me a favor and turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy 6. And let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, our hearts are encouraged this morning as we worship Lord, as we hear what you have done, 1,400 people coming to you, Lord. Lord, we ask for more. Lord, we know you love your children. And Lord, I pray that you, you would continue to use us outside of our comfort zones, Lord, to share your word with people. God, you are an amazing God, and we want everyone to know. So Father, I pray that you would continue to equip us, and that you would grow us, and you would draw us in. Father, I thank you for your love for your children. I thank you for your word and how true it is. Holy Spirit, will you come and, and teach us through your word this morning? God, I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Deuteronomy is the book that we are almost going to end in. We're going to have a couple psalms at the very end of our Know the Word, which is like in two weeks. Uh, so we are really, really close to the end of going through Scripture in, uh, in two years. Sarah's going to do it in three months. I don't know how that's going to go, <laughs> but it took us two years, but we didn't literally major in it the, the whole time. So, so what we are we're almost at the end, and we're in Deuteronomy. I don't know about you, but for me, Deuteronomy, just the name of the book doesn't sound very impressive. So it's a book that we just kind of overlook very often. We need to understand that Deuteronomy is an incredibly important book. It is a theological foundational book in the Old Testament. It's like Romans would be in the New Testament. Deuteronomy is quoted by Jesus more than any other book. Deuteronomy is the book that the, that the Jewish people would truly know inside and out. It was and is an incredibly important book. Just because we think it's just you know, a review of all these stories, it's m so much more than that. It's a review of stories because literally what, this, what Deuteronomy is, is Moses. He is about to die. This is his farewell speech to Israel. He has led Israel out of Egypt, 
wandered around for 40 years, and he has been their leader, their pastor, their shepherd, their king, whatever you want to call it. He has been their leader for 40 years. And God has told him he is not going to lead the people into the promised land. So he knows this is it with the people. A generation has passed away under his leadership, and there's a new generation that is going to go in and take take the land that God had promised. And these are Moses' closing words. So what he does is he brings some review to it. He reviews what God has done. There's going to be a lot of, hey, remember this. This is what God has done. Remember where we were. Remember these things. And so a lot of Deuteronomy is review, but it's awesome because Moses doesn't just take the review and say this, this is what happened. He said, this is what happened. Now pay attention because this is what you need to do with it. Now remember what we did here? This is what it means, and this is where we're headed. And it's an amazing book because it gives a definition to the history that has been going on, that we got through all Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. All of that is summed up in Deuteronomy, but then given explanation. So Deuteronomy is a fantastic book to study. And we, we have like two weeks to do it. We're going to have more time in the books when this is over. We're going to start getting into some of these books, all these books that we've been teased with that we're like, oh, I'd love to dive in and go through. But let's look at Deuteronomy now that we know kind of what the foundation of it is, that that Moses has a few things he wants to tell his people. There are three things that you're going to hear time and time and time again. It's remember. Remember what God did. He redoes the entire story of Israel. He says, remember. It's a reminder to us because this is who God is and who He has been in our lives. Remember. The next word you're going to hear constantly is obey. Obey. And then He's going to keep encouraging them to teach, to pass it on. So let's dive in to Deuteronomy Chapter 6, verse 1. These are the, dec- the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your, go- your God directed me to teach you to observe in the, land you, uh, in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping His decrees and commands that I give you And so that you may enjoy long life. That was packed full. Let's tear that apart for a second, and then we can keep going. He starts off by saying this, what I'm giving you, we've already talked about the Ten Commandments. We saw all of that in in Exodus. But he's going to review it. He says, listen, these are the laws that I have. These are the decrees that God has asked us to do. This is what he wants to do. What God did when he brought them out of Egypt and the laws that he gave them was he was saying, this is how I want you to relate to me. This is how I want you to relate to me. This is what I want you to do. This is who I want you to be. This is, you are my people. This is what my people look like. And so he says, these are the laws and the decrees that God has given And it says, observe them, obey them in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that your children, you and your children, and their children after you may fear the Lord your God as long as you live in that land. Fear the Lord of God. We use this phrase, and we've talked about it a hundred times here at Trinity. The fear of God is is part a trembling understanding of how small we are and how huge He is. That we should fear Him. Scripture says, listen, why should I be afraid of man who can do nothing to me? I need to be afraid of the one who can destroy my soul. Right? So there's an aspect of fear, but this is not a fear 
like if a bear came running in here, what would your response be? How many of you would seek shelter with the bear? None of you. We would all get up and we would leave. If there was a tiny snake, I'm out. All right? Just letting you know, I'm gone. I hate them. It's all good. We run from the things that we are afraid of. But the fear of the Lord is completely different because it is not something we run from. The fear of the Lord brings us to. It is a relationship. It is an honoring. It is an understanding of who He is and putting Him into right perspective and the relationship that we have. When we talk about the fear of the Lord, it is an understanding of who He is and a relationship with Him that brings us safety. So the fear of the Lord that he's talking about here, he's saying, I want you to obey his commands because you fear the Lord, because you are in relationship with him. Obey his commands that it might go well with you. You understand there's two different types of obedience. There is a, an obedience out of duty out of this is my responsibility this is the work that i must perform and then there is an obedience that is found in relationship there's a desire to obey now this is where israel runs into their problem this is where we run into our problem we run into a problem with obedience because you're going to hear hundreds of times throughout scripture to obey. You're going to hear it constantly. You've heard me said, I've hold up the Bible, and I must admit, I'm wrong every once in a while. I've held up the Bible, and I have said, listen, what we can sum up God's word in two words. Trust me. Yes. That's partly true. But how we're supposed to walk in what Scripture says and what you can sum up all of Scripture is, is trust and obey. It's your left and right foot. It is how we walk. I trust, I obey. I trust, and I obey. I probably just left the screen from the TV. Sorry, people. I wandered a little far. But we trust and we obey. And you're going to hear it time and time again in Scripture. The great, com- uh, the, the great Commission, what does Jesus say? Go and make disciples of all people, teaching them what? To obey what I have commanded. You're going to hear the word obey. Jesus, uh, God says, listen, if you love me, you will obey my commands. If you love me, you will obey. And so what we begin to see here is that there's there's two different pieces of obedience. And the obedience that he is calling to here in Deuteronomy is not just an obedience of work. That this is what you do so that you get these things. Because then we weigh it out, don't we? We say, you know what, I don't necessarily want to do this so that I'm willing to risk what the outcome is. If I were to say to you, the first person up here that slaps my hand gets $100. Some of you are like, you know what, it's not worth $100 to look like a fool. Right? There are some of you Freedy, who will leap across the entire pew and he will be like, ah, he will knock himself unconscious diving to get to that hundred dollars. He will look at the end and say, this is worth it. I'm going for it. Right? He will obey because he thinks the reward is worth it. And when we obey, we have this mindset Is the reward worth obedience? So stop for a second. Here comes the challenge. And I'm unapologetic about this challenge. Are there things that you do not obey God for because what you view as the blessing is not worth the obedience? What in your life do you know God is not pleased? You're not supposed to ask those questions in church. Yes, I am. I'm your shepherd. My job 
is to guide you to the green pastures, beside the quiet water. What in your life is not pleasing to God? And you know it. We all have it. It got really quiet in here, didn't it? Even the babies are like... What in your life is not pleasing to God? What you have done is you have weighed out, you know what, the the blessings that I'm missing from the Lord, what I'm doing outweighs it. We have this mentality that this is what I do, so maybe I get something, or it's what I'm just told to do. Obedience is a very difficult thing, especially in our culture. In our culture, we have this this balancing and weighing act. That is an obedience out of duty and out out of our works. But how many of you, if God were to come to you and say to you, this doesn't please me, would stop doing what you are doing, would change because you know It's what God wants because of the relationship you have with Him. May this morning be a time where you allow God to speak to you, to convict your heart, and to say to you, I am not pleased with this area. Change this. This is not how I want you to be, to live, to think, to act. And how many of you would then walk away from that? would walk away from the sin that you have in your life, the peace of you, that's a relationship. That's the obedience God is calling here in Deuteronomy. He's not calling for them and saying to them, here, here is what I want you to do, and not offer a relationship to do it. He is saying, no, this is how I want to relate with you. So let's keep going in Deuteronomy. Sorry, I got a little caught up. So that your children and their children after them may fear the Lord, your God, as long as you live by keeping His decrees that I give you so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, Israel. He says, turn your ears. Look up here. Pay attention. Be careful to what? Obey. So that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised. Hear, O Israel, pay attention, hear, listen, O Israel. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and with all of your strength. These commands I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Do you think he's serious about what he wants you to remember? Write it on your doors. Stick it on your forehead. Put it on your hands. I don't care where you put it. Remember. Obey the Lord. Why? Because you love Him with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind so that when you go into the land that God has given you and it is abundant and it is good that you don't forget Him and begin to disobey because you are out of relationship with Him. Do you understand? This is all about relationship with God. How do I obey? It is impossible to obey God by my own strength without relationship with Him. It is impossible to please God without faith. Without relationship with Him. It is impossible to please Him. Let's look at John 14. Incredibly convicting verses. And I ask that you allow this deep into the heart of who you are. John 14, and let's look at chapter 20, uh, 
Let's start at 15. 15 says this, If you love me, keep my commands. Scroll down to verse 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show them to myself. Verse 22, Then Judas Iscariot said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? And Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Those who do not obey do not love me. Those who love me obey my commands. Obedience driven by relationship. Obedience of relationship. Obedience of love. Obedience of, of, of that relationship. He says, listen, if, if there are things in your life that you know don't please me, are you loving me? If there are things in your life that you know do not please him, why? Why do you keep them in your heart? Why do you keep the bitterness? Why do you keep the unforgiveness? Why do we not obey Him? Why do we live in, 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 in sin? Why? Because we love our sin more than we love Him. And that's the simple truth. And the amazing thing is, I, I believe the past few months especially, we here at Trinity, every one of you, I have watched grow deeper in your relationship with God. You have been drawing in closer. You're enjoying being in His Word. And you're hearing His truth. And you're saying, God, I want more of you. But we cannot have more of Him and continue in disobedience. So my challenge to you today is to truly go for more of Him. It is time to take the idols, the sin, the things that don't please Him, and get rid of them. Look at what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus is there, and he's saying, listen, I give half of what I have to the poor. And if I've robbed anybody, I will pay them back fourfold what I stole from them. Do you know what that probably equaled? All of his money. He was willing to put it all away. Why? Because there's a relationship. Jesus came and found him in a tree because this little wee little man. I love the little wee part. This wee little man. Jesus comes to him and he knows his name. And he says, I'm going to come and I'm going to eat with you. I'm going to sit with you. I have an, a relationship to offer you. And Zacchaeus looks at that relationship and says, this is worth everything. I'm going to obey. And Jesus says, then you love me if you're willing to obey. And if you love me, then I will come and I will eat with you. And I and the Father will love you. Not, it is not about works. It is about faith and relationship first. We are saved by faith through grace. We are saved by that. And because of that, we have an opportunity to love God. And if we have an opportunity to love Him, then we have an opportunity to obey. And that becomes our joy. Zacchaeus, one of the greatest things that he has ever, probably the thing that brought him the absolute most joy, was giving away all that he had in obedience to the Father. That's what brought him joy. If you want to know, I know you're thinking, how can I give this up? I'm trapped, I'm stuck in this. And I will tell you, no, you are not. If there's an area, not if, the area that does not please the Lord in your life, if you hand that to Him, it'll be the most glorious, joy-filled 
you've ever done. It'll be the most terrifying thing as you sit there and think about it right now. But this, this is the relationship we have with God. I can't say I trust God and then not obey. If I trust Him, I'm going to obey. If I trust Him and know Him and know who He is and how He loves me, then I'm going to obey. And what Deuteronomy is is a book, and especially Deuteronomy 6, he's saying, listen, this is how it works. Love the Lord your God and obey the commandments that He gives you. Because He knows how you're supposed to live. He knows who you are. He created you. He knows your true name. He says, I, I know you by name. You are mine. And so when he says, this is how I want you to live, it's not to torment you. It's for his glory and for your good. Will you trust him and walk in obedience? By faith, Abraham did what? Obeyed. Because he trusted him who was faithful. He had a relationship with him who is always faithful. So my challenge to you this morning is incredibly simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. With all of your strength. That's obeying Him. Obeying Him. Ask like David did. Lord, search me. And know me. Know my anxious thoughts. Know, know who I am and what I do. And if there is any unclean way within me, if there is anything that does not please you, would you lead me? That's the prayer I want for you this morning. What in your life is not pleasing to the Lord? Do you really want to hold that when you have a relationship with Him? I look across and I see each one of you and I know you have drawn closer to God especially in these last few months. You don't want to continue in your sin. So don't. He's given us the Holy Spirit that we don't have to. Will we continue to sin? Yes. And there is forgiveness and it's already forgiven yes if there's an area in your life that is not pleasing to god lay it down for his name's sake for relationship because of how awesome you know your god to be let's pray because i believe god's the one who does the rest of this work Heavenly Father, Lord, it doesn't matter how eloquent I try to put it, if your Holy Spirit's not convicted, it's for nothing. The Holy Spirit, we give you room in our lives to convict us, to lead us in obedience because of the relationship we have. I praise you that you don't just require us to do, to give us a bunch of rules and traditions that we must follow. But you give us a relationship that we get to walk in and that we don't have to walk this alone. Father, first and foremost, if there's anybody here who has lied to themselves and they believe they have a relationship with you and they don't, speak truth to them. Speak truth to their hearts right now. Tell them, I don't know you, but I stand at the door and knock. If you open it, I will come and I will eat with you. May your words ring in their ears. May their joy be found as they open the door and allow you in. Father, for those who do know you, forgive us for all the things that we do in our lives that we have settled, justified, made excuses for, lived in, calloused our hearts because of. 
God, you are the softener of our hearts. Will you soften the hearts and allow us to hear the conviction of your spirit? Give us the strength to obey, Lord. For some, this is going to be so hard, you're asking them to change major pieces of their life. Lord, it's for our relationship with you. So, Lord, I ask that you would come and you would convict and you would grow. God, you are a mighty God. You're an incredible and good Father. You are the good shepherd. Help us to trust and obey. Help us to love you with all of our heart and soul and mind and obey your decrees. Help us to know you more. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing.
let you know of two opportunities tomorrow. Uh, we will be having our dart ministry, our fellowship time. Uh, just bring a snack that we might enjoy uh, one another. We will have, uh, we'll set it up as people come. We'll figure out how we're going <laughs> to how we're going to run this all together. But come on out. It's going to be a great time of fellowship with one another. Uh, that will be here at seven o'clock uh, downstairs. So please, uh, please come and join us. Also on September 26th, for all of you who are new or feel disconnected or don't really know uh, the leadership, know me very well, know you know uh, the the people who are are in leadership here at the church, we're going to have a time in between services where we want you just to come downstairs and sit and talk with us. Uh, we do this once every every once in a while when we've had a lot of newer people come. Please, I don't care if you've been here for like 20 years and you're like, you know what, I feel disconnected, let me come down. You can. Come on down. We, we really, truly want to get to know you, uh, and we want you to get to know us, because together we can grow, and, and our authority in each other's lives changes when, we've, when we know each other well. So please, uh, come on, plan on September 26th, just being here between services uh, downstairs. We will have, a, we'll have a couple snacks for us to sit, because you have to eat if you're a Christian. I don't know why, um, but we have to eat together, and um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Now remember who our God is, that he is desperate for a relationship with you. He's not dying to punish you and to catch you doing things that are wrong. He is literally dying to save you and forgive you. His arms are wide open. That is the Savior that we have. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, Lord, we worship you now. We worship you with our lives, and may we offer you our lives as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you. Holy Father, Lord, you know us. Know me. Search me. Search us. Know our anxious thoughts. Know if there's any unclean way within us. Holy Spirit, will you come and lead us in the way everlasting? We want to know you more. It is good to be near you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed.